it's time to update it. It's been a while. I did 100 tips and tricks for PUBG a while back, but after I've been asked by you guys, here's an updated version with everything. Today's video is sponsored by PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, so thank you very much for that. There's a full list of all the tips and tricks in the comment section, but now let's roll the video. It's gonna go fast. Hope you guys enjoy. You can use the two-seater bike to get on top of the western bridge. You just gotta line it up right. Sometimes you'll get the bike with you, hit it, and sometimes you gotta jump off it. So buy a bike, but you're on top of the bridge. From here, you can snipe people hiding on the bridge. A lot of the pillars can be used to be climbed here on the military bridge. Simply walk on over and walk up. After this, you can jump up here and even climb further up if you so wish to. So jump up here, continue going. Another sweet sniper spot. This can be used on multiple of these where you look at the angle. This is climbable, this is climbable, this is, and then we get to the point where these aren't climbable. So take a look at them, get into a nice sniping position and take people out on the bridge. A quick way to get off the scaffold is to jump off the side, hit this one, and continue down. You can skip this one, you'll take a little bit of a hit from damage, but if you gotta get down really quickly, that can be done too. But this is a faster way to get down um, instead of taking the stairs. So if you have people shooting out here, this could be a good escape route. A good binding for the driver's seat here is having W or Shift W to get in the driver's seat. That way, when you're in any other seat, you'll just start driving, and you'll be flying. That means that if you come from a vehicle from this side, look at that, magically in the driver's seat. If you like leaning out the window when you shoot, good binds for this is E and Q. Now for the other binds, I have used F1 and F2. That means that we can easily swap to the other seat and back again without having to press some weird bind as if we had them all on F1 through F4. It makes it a lot easier. I like these binds. This is more of a personal preference. Maybe you'll like them too, let me know. When driving any vehicle, if you want to do this seat swap, make sure you hold down W as you swap seat, otherwise it'll look like this. The car will break, and that way you can't lean out the vehicle and gain your momentum or keep your momentum. So by holding that W down while we swap seats, we'll keep on rolling and we can spray this vehicle down. Six spray. To make a quick stop at a compound without taking any damage, hold the handbrake and slide the side or slap the side into an object. This way you won't take any damage and you can jump out and quickly get into that action. While the van probably isn't your favorite vehicle, it does have a lot of HP, 4,000. And if you do not boost, you'll be able to drive for 22 minutes. That's almost an entire game. If you do boost, this has the worst fuel efficiency almost in the game except for the BRDM. So if you do boost, you'll only be able to drive for three and a half minutes where you lose a total of 18 and a half minute of drive time. If you wish to get on top of your boat, if you're stuck out in the ocean, you can use the very rear end seat, park it up against an object, jump out, and you'll be able to be on your boat, snipe any other people coming your way. This is a good thing if you're stuck out in the water and you're by a rock or the bridge. There's plenty of these rocks around the map, you can see here, all over the place, up top too. So this is the way that you can still somewhat have a fighting chance if you get stuck out here. If you used half your life getting out to a drop in the water and you see a boat coming your way, you can vault on top of the crate and start mowing them down. So don't necessarily give up if you do see a boat coming this way because they won't know that you're here. So if you can quickly get up here, then you're good. You can swim underwater for 20 seconds before starting to take damage. Be sure to be up there a little bit before that to make sure that you don't take any unnecessary damage. You can use these rocks behind prison to get down without taking any damage. So let's say you get a knock or something, find a path here and simply climb down. Bam, bam through here and then we're home free. Just like that. GG's. When driving the two-seater bike or the scooter, be sure to hover your pinky finger over the control button. That way, when you go over any little jump, you'll quickly force the bike to go down. Because often the bike will want to go on its rear wheel, and if it does that without you getting control of it, you will fall off and most likely die. So make that a habit, and you'll have a lot more fun riding this bike. It will always be a gun in the crate, however there's only a 43% chance of getting a heal, 23% chance of getting a ghillie suit, 80% chance of getting a backpack, 24.6% chance of getting a scope, and overall attachments 54.5%. This is data that I've collected looting 1000 of these bad boys. While it's possible for an airplane to drop two drops at the same time, 
it's never possible for two normal airplanes to be there at the same time. If you see two planes coming your way, one of them is a flare gun drop and one of them is a regular package. You can get two different things from a flare gun. One of them being a special crate, the other a BRDM. The BRDM must be shot with outside the play zone and the crate must be shot inside the play zone. That means inside the wide circle, which is currently not here. In the beginning of a match in Wrangell, there's never a special airdrop available. You gotta wait for the first zone to hit. Now, if you do shoot your flare gun right now, inside the play zone, you would get nothing. The only thing you get at the beginning is a BRDM, and that's only achievable by shooting outside the zone. So if you do want an airdrop, head to the first zone and shoot it and get that crate. The flare from the flare gun does not deal any damage. Currently. Maybe that could change. Who knows? But currently, save it shooting it up in the skies and don't shoot your teammates or anyone else with it if you're only two teammates in a vehicle it's a good call to be in the same side of the vehicle that way when you need to get out of the vehicle you'll get out on the same side let's say people are coming towards us we'll be on this side ready to fight them because the driver will most likely always value him or herself over you if you have a snake in game and you're only two people left a good thing can be to drop your backpack make room for it that way when you're snaking, whether you're playing first or third person, it'll be a lot harder to spot you. Whereas if you have that level 3 backpack, it does stick up quite far. So this is very very sweaty snake tag, but if you really want that dub, that's a way that you can go about it. Or at least increase your odds. These wooden shacks can be driven through, but let's say you got range on an opponent who's in here and you're far out. These can also be broken just by shooting at them. So don't think that you're safe just because you're in one of these. If you see an enemy running into these in the middle of the open, blast it open. And what is he going to do now? He's completely vulnerable. While it is hard, these shacks can fit a nade through the window. You got to take a little bit of practice to get it through. But if you can nail this one and get it on range, you're already in a good spot. Hey, Cooking your nades is probably one of the most important things to learn. However you want to do it, either A, go on training grounds, or B, just count in your head, but get in the lock on lockdown. Because if I start throwing nades here at a guy behind this shack, he will have plenty of time to get away. However, if I cook it to perfection, this guy will die and not stand a chance at getting out of this pickle. So do yourself a favor, get really good at cooking these nades, because they do make a night and day difference. My favorite play to do in Pachinki is loot up these corner houses over here. Bam. And then after that, head to this building and get on top of the roofs. I really, really love playing on rooftops. So this is a personal preference type of deal. But going out here on the balcony and jumping through here will allow you to jump on this roof, this roof, this, this, and that. And then you can scout out around here. After that, you can choose to go on this and continue the roof place. If you're dropping school, let's say you get a gun here, but you don't really feel like fighting here. You can jump off the roof here and vault through this window over here. Just a little way. You can't get back though, but this is a play to make if you like school drops. There is other possibilities than going from here and having to go down here. If you like bridge camping and someone shows up to the bridge down here, you can hit out and prone and shoot their little toes underneath. This is really annoying for someone being over there and often I catch players by surprise or off guard by this. So take your shots at them and they'll be confused. Be cautious jumping into water from high heights. Let's say this one is good. However, if I would have jumped just a little bit in here, I would have been dead. Because even though there is a little bit of water, you will desync or whatever. I mean, if it was real life and you jumped off of that, you would probably break both of your legs. So obviously it's gonna hurt you so be cautious figure out where's the water deep and don't risk it for the biscuit just play it safe while disabling character render here in the inventory can gain you a little bit of frames it is not the way it used to be back in the day it gained you a complete ridiculous boost in frames whenever you went into the inventory this has been optimized so don't be afraid to look at your character anymore there's no getting knocked in water if you're playing duos or squats and you get a knock which will be a kill because you can't like fall down here and get rest you will instantly die so be cautious if you are picking up if you do get shot you will be in the main menu regardless of where a drop comes in it will never change in height that means a drop on top of stopper will land a lot quicker than a drop anywhere else on the map look at that do yourself a favor and make 
the same weapons be in the same slot every time. Let's say you like snipers and ARs. Always, example, have your ARs in slot 1 and snipers in the second slot. That way, whenever you gotta spray someone down, you'll know that'll be the first slot. Sniping will be in the second. So make this in your head if you're rocking an SMG DMR setup, AR DMR setup, anything. If you like your snipers up here instead, do that and do that every time. That way you're less likely going to mess up swapping to the right gun. If you're running in the open and got to spot someone, a good way to instead of rocking them backwards is jump and be up a little bit. Do a couple of jumps and then turn around again. So like that, you'll be faster moving rather than just slowly walking backwards. This one's real simple. Look away from flashbangs to avoid being flashed. Turning your view distance up in this game will not allow you to see players further out. It will allow you to see some structure further out, but if you have it ultra low, it'll be easier to spot people at a distance. Dropping a little goodie is not a bad idea if you're late game and have a house on lockdown. Close the doors below, place a little bit of a goodie bag here for them to run into and then you mow them down. It is faster to swim underwater than above water. This is why there's breath. However, holding down the sprint key will not change your speed in any way. When you're in the water with a BRDM, don't ever use your boost. It will drain the gas a lot quicker and you will not gain a speed difference in any way. The wrangle is 8 by 8 kilometers. Now this means that one big black square is 1 kilometer and one white within these is 100 meters. You can use this if you want to see roll or just line up people from afar. With auto swap now being a feature in the game, you can simply just swap guns to get all your attachments over there. The remaining will be put in your inventory. If you want to remove all attachments from a weapon, simply hold left alt and right click. That way they will all go inside your inventory. You can also hold control and right click, that will drop your weapon. When your teammate is driving the vehicle and you're in the passenger seat enjoying a nice relaxing energy drink and you're like, oh wait, I didn't want to drink that many. Be careful when you cancel because pressing twice instead of once will flop you out of the vehicle. So just once is enough because otherwise you will be gone. These following bikes, vehicles, whatever, all have one thing in common. They have no boosting and they can all be controlled in the air. Killing the engine can be used with a button C. But if you do kill it in a BRDM, this thing will gain incredible speed because it's so heavy and it'll just keep flying downhill. So it's really cool that you can with vehicles kill the engine and surprise slap your enemies in the face. And the BRDM especially because you want to save that gas, build the speed and... It doesn't make a sound. Cars will almost always unflip themselves. However, if that rare 1 out of 100 chance does happen where a USC lands on its roof, you can unflip it with a nade. Just be cautious, don't get it too close to the vehicle. Right next to it will push it a bit. You can throw grenades two ways. Click right click to toggle between these two options. One will go far, and obviously, one will go short. A nade can be pocketed again by pressing X or swap into a weapon. However, once the pin have been pulled on a nade, like this, press an X, will drop that sucker at your feet. Nades have 5 seconds after the pin is pulled, and after that, they will blow up. Flashbangs and smokes are a lot quicker than this. The BRDM is not affected by spike strips, it simply just cannot get its tires blown. So that means even driving over one, it will not waste your spike strip. The spike trap is not OP. Even the two-seater bike won't spin out of control and you'll still remain with some speed to get in cover. So don't be too scared about spike traps because even the two-seater bike will continue to go. One would think it would spin out of control, but no, you'll be able to keep on going. The spike trap is a single-use item. That means once it's been activated, it will no longer have any effect. So use it wisely. One gas can cannot kill an enemy. You'll need two of them. The gas cans can be used in a chain reaction, so if you want to set up a nice little gas trap in a house or something, blow on one of them, will make the others blow too. To get a perfect full boost, either use a painkiller and an energy drink, or a syringe. The painkiller will heal you up to this point, and the energy drink will take you the rest of the way. The syringe and painkiller will both take you 6 seconds to activate, while the energy drink will only take you 4. So, syringe, while it feels like it takes forever to activate, it's actually the exact same as a painkiller. A quick bamboozle play if you're in one of the apartments and someone is pushing you and jump down here, peek in through the window and take them as they're pushing up. If you like to have your vehicle with you at all places, you can take it with you all the way through bunkers. It's a little racetrack if you would. 
And even if you're going here late game with your team, you could hide your vehicle down here safely. This warehouse is being used as a trophy case for big PUBG events. They will get their posters in here. In the beginning when the map was released, it was all empty. Don't mind these spike traps. And then as we go along, big teams that has been owned in butt cheeks will get their trophies in here, pictures, etc. Pretty darn cool. My favorite airdrop strategy on Arango is land here at Watertown at the garage. You loot these couple of houses, check for a vehicle. There's usually one in the garage, out here, up here, down here, or over here. This way, I almost always have a vehicle, a little bit of loot, and I can rush that first airdrop. The fastest form of transportation in PUBG is the two-seater bike going 155 kilometers an hour. The BRDM and the van are the two slowest in the game. The BRDM coming in at 103 and the van at 105. The snow bike, snowmobile, and BRDM all have in common that they can't get their tires blown, mainly because these two don't even have tires. So that's something to keep in mind when you're choosing what vehicle you want to go on. Don't ever use your nades on BRDMs unless the opponents are about to get out of it because it takes around 21 to blow up in solos, 26 in duos, and 42 grenades in squads to blow this sucker up. So only use a nade towards a BRDM if you suspect the team is about to jump out because otherwise, save him for something better. The snow bike is the weakest vehicle in PUBG. It only has 700 HP, which means that I would be able to blow that up in less than half a mag of an AK. We shot a couple extra shots, but it will blow up quickly. While the pan does deal more damage, it doesn't travel quite as far as other thrown weapons do. When you're playing duos or squads, be sure to pick up other attachments for your teammates. While you may not have use for them, because you already have one, your teammate might need one too, or your other teammate, or your fourth teammate. So pick up attachments early game for your teammates to enjoy off of. You can unmute and mute voice chat by pressing Control plus T. You can swap voice channels by pressing Control and Y. When playing duos or squads, call out your color instead of saying, hey, on me. That way, your teammates will easily locate where you are. If you're dropping loot or if you're in trouble needing some backup, use that color. To mark a route for your teammates to follow, hold left alt and right click in the map. Do this up to four times. One, two, three, four. This way you can mark routes, say, hey, we got to push down this mountain, go up here, over the bridge, over the water town, and then we'll just chill right there. A good way to use the waypoint system is to mark an airdrop. Let's say this drop isn't going to drop right on us. So we'll look towards it. Then we see the drops right here. It's not too far away, but this is more to give you kind of a feel of how you can use this. Now we know the airdrop is going to be on our path some way. So if we just get a car and follow that line, we should run into it. A good way to use the waypoint system is to mark the initial plane's flight path. Let's say it's sort of like this. That means that if you dropped all the way up here, you know the most people are going to be coming from down here. If you play a lot of PUBG games in one day, it sometimes blend in with the uh, flight paths and you often forget. You can break the haystacks all around Wrangle. It does require you to go at least 40 kilometers an hour to break one. To break these metal fences, you must go at least 60 kilometers an hour to break them. If you're being bombarded while you're sailing your boat and you want to get out quick, going in an absolute straight line and then pressing F will almost always, now I say sometimes maybe there'll be a little glitch, but 99% of the times you will survive if you go in an absolute straight line. If you have any type of turning, you will get flung away and you will most likely die from it. You can buy an auto run, which will also auto drive. However, it will not use boost, so you will have to at least use one finger to press that boost button. And now you got your own little uh, Tesla. You're good. The spawn island no longer offers any loot. So grabbing a boat sailing in out here will just be a waste of time. Losing a tire is not the end of the world. Even some vehicles will be able to drive with two tires. However, it might not be as fast. They can still go a little bit. So losing one tire is not the end of the world. Losing two kind of sucks, but you can still drive if you so want to. If you don't want to be hurt shooting out a tire, you can also punch them out. So if you want to go that extra mile to be silent, there you go. If you want to see where your sniper shots land, just don't let go right click after you shoot. Let's say we're aiming after this. We're going to miss. But now we see, all right, it was down there. So we'll try again one more time. Lift it up a little bit. And that should be good. There you go. Only the 15 times and the 8 times can use zeroing anymore. Not even the 6 times can zero. So if you like zeroing, 
get an 8 or a 15 times. If you do want to drop a weapon and you have no more space in your inventory, the remaining ammo will drop on the ground with it. However, if you do have inventory space, the ammo will not go on the ground but will go inside of your inventory. Bolts and DMRs are the only guns that can use the 8 and the 15 times. ARs can use a maximum of 6 times. In all of PUBG, there's only two vehicle spawns that are 100%. This one right here in Senek, in the cave. Now this can be used to catch the first airdrop, drive it in, get a little bit of loot, and then come back. It can either be a scooter or a motorbike. There's a jump here in boot camp that you can do, preferably with a bike. The scooter can get you somewhat over there, but with a bike you can make it all the way no problemo. Sometimes you can run or drive the bike here in the water, the scooter, and save that too. So don't be afraid to do the jump here even with a scooter. It can make it there if you want to save it for later. Using a snow bike, it's possible to climb the very big rock here near your castle. The new one, you gotta have the snow bike and hit this ramp. I'm about to hit right on the spot. And keep driving here. And then you just gotta bail out of it. Oh, rid of the bike. The rest of it is about a bit of climbing. I'm gonna show you the route real quick. Up here, vaulting, ledge grabbing, etc. Up on this one. And then we go up with the tricky one here. Over. And just follow this path all the way over here. That way you can be on top of the new very fat proc uh, and McKendy. It's kind of a tricky spot to get up to, but imagine a zone ending out here. Now that there's no water, the fan the zone can end out here. Every single rock on McKendy can be climbed. Now with the new one, I've tested, found a route for that, as shown previous. But every single rock anywhere on the map can be climbed. This is the only one where you need a vehicle. The rest of them. Simply just a little bit of ledge scrapping, a little bit of vaulting. Try to find the spot just once. After that, you'll be able to climb all of them. No problem. It's really fun to snipe from up here. So, enjoy. There's different wheels for throwables, heal items, and emotes. You can bind these if you wish to use these. Um, I just have one for emotes because that, that's what I prefer. But, if you do wish to have uh, heals or nades, you can bind those wheels too for an easy access to whatever nades you might want to use. If you need to share ammo with a teammate, hold down left alt and right click to drop half a stack. If you want to just drop user input number, let's say you want to drop 20 rounds, left control plus right click and then you can enter the number 20, out you go. The same goes with looting, we can loot half by holding left alt and keep on dropping half if that is what we want. In case you want to apply your own item skin to a weapon, hold left control and left alt and left click. This will say the charm and skin has been applied now this is already my skin but left control and left alt will apply it using your enemies as bait is a really good idea let's say this is a knock player you have the high ground just leave him be because his teammates wherever they are in this case right here that's the other <laughs> enemy um he will be forced to play aggressively to try to save him meanwhile you'll have the high ground and you can peek just as you wish this guy will be confused or have more to deal with than you because he needs to pay attention to his teammate too so not finishing them off right away when they're nowhere near safe in any way. Just focus on the other targets. If you have a team in a UAC or other vehicle rolling by you, aim for the driver. Now if you're a full team, of course, just spray down the vehicle. But the driver taken out is always the priority because then the car will just keep on rolling. The other guys will have to react very quickly to take the driver's seat, brake, or do anything really. So if you have the shot, a clear car 9 shot or anything, always aim for the driver, even if there's a passenger. And if you're a full squad, just hose that whole car down. If you hear people shooting, a good way to locate the shot is just wiggle around with your ears so that that way you can locate, okay, it's coming from a direct path, such as... We know it's right here. If you're just standing still, with our back to it, and the sound disappears... It could be anywhere on this line, in, according to my ears. That, that's at least a good tip for me to use, so maybe it'll help you too. The second guaranteed vehicle spawn is the one at Hacienda, the Gold Murado. There is one thing to this, if you do have a Murado skin enabled, it will override it and you will no longer have the Golden Nugget here. So, I suggest don't have a Murado skin if you do want to hunt the, the Golden Beast. Here at Menace, you can get up into these beautiful cranes. You gotta run here, either ledge grab or make the, the jump. After that, crawl all the way up. We're going to cheat. All the way up here. And you want to jump on this ledge. Crawl over. Jump onto this one. Hop in here. Little ledge grab up here. Crawl under here. And jump ledge. And you're now at the very top. 
playing duos or squads being inside the red zone do not be in the vehicle because it will instantly kill you no chance to rest so rather be on foot if you have to be in the red zone just simply get in cover there's vending machines around mirama these have 15 uses every time can grant you either one painkiller or one energy drink or a jackpot in the jackpots you get multiple energy drinks so beware those are the ones you want if you shoot at a vending machine it'll make a lot of noise so avoid doing that the jackpot however will also make noise so while you can be happy that you win the big prize you can also be sad here's a list of all the vending machines on mirama yep that is a lot the big office buildings have a hidden vending machines or at least it's possible one spawns here and one spawns up in this little crack here against this wall be aware currently the haystacks on mirama cannot be broken when using a heal, you can now walk while boosting as an example. Be sure to duck, crouch, walk around a little bit if you're doing it in the open. So if you're just walking like this, you're an easy target. Whereas if you look like a confused monkey, it's a little bit harder to hit you. When taking the, the loop here on Mirama, be cautious. If you're in a truck, it might land on the head and it will blow up. And bikes currently cannot do the loop. They'll be swung around like a crazy bike. But yeah, with trucks too, be careful when you get to this little glitch thing if you do land on your roof it will blow and your entire team will die well at least everyone who's in it when you're in late game be sure to pop your boosters make sure you're at full boost there's no need to keep them for when the game's over the same if you have an arm don't save the bullets keep firing if you miss so what you're not going to bring it home after the game is over use your utility while you have it that's 100 that's a wrap. Thank you again, PUBG, for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found something that you could use. I will catch you guys in the next one.